We're speaking with Representative Jeb Henserling of Texas uh, and Chairman of the uh, House Finances, uh, Financial Services Committee. Correct. So one of the big issues right now for you, uh, Congressman Henserling, is the XM Bank. Correct. And this has become quite controversial. I and mean, this is, it used to be sort of, uh, the XM Bank used to be really interesting to wonks. And that's <laughs> about it. But all of a sudden it's become quite controversial and a, a rather passionate subject, especially among fiscal conservatives. It should be. And it should be. Uh, this is a uh, this is something that is supposed to be a driver of American commerce, helping us to compete in the world, but it turns into more of a way of uh, sort of a corporate welfare uh, structure. Oh, absolutely, not? absolutely. Well, first, not one in 10,000 have probably heard of the Export-Import Bank, uh, but thanks to you and hopefully others, uh, we're getting more and more Americans to understand exactly what this agency does. Now, the agency is relatively small in terms of the federal government, uh, but the principle underlying it is an important one. And yes, if there was a poster child for corporate welfare, it's probably the Export-Import Bank. Uh, and we need to promote America, uh, where your success is dependent upon how hard you work uh, and how creatively you work on Main Street uh, and not who you know in Washington, D.C. So I think most taxpayers would be aghast to know that this bank that's been around since the New Deal takes their money and they send it uh, either literally or figuratively overseas to places like Russia uh, and China uh, and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates if they agree to buy certain U.S. exports. And if you delve in deeply, what you will find is the U.S. companies who benefit from this uh, tend to be some of the largest, most well-financed companies uh, in America, uh, like Boeing, like GE, uh, and like Bechtel. Uh, and, and I respect these companies. Uh, they answer to shareholders. I have to answer to citizens uh, and taxpayers. And most of these companies could fund these exports on their own. And if the Export-Import Bank wasn't using funny Washington accounting, but if they were using Main Street accounting, known as GAAP accounting, fair value accounting, the Congressional Budget Office says, yes, they are literally costing taxpayer money. But the biggest reason that we ought to let the Export-Import Bank expire is because it's engaged in political lending. Ultimately, this is about bureaucrats making decisions about credit allocation uh, and not people, free people in a competitive marketplace. They do ideological lending. I mean, they've got a green quota. They have a no coal policy. They have a sub-Sahara Africa lending mandate, a small business lending lending mandate. And then there's all the cronyism. I mean, they've managed to fund Solyndra and Enron, and it's all based, regrettably, upon a lot of political connections, and that's just wrong. So it's time to let XM expire. Congressman Henserling, uh, what, what would be the competitive disadvantage to American companies abroad if the Export-Import Bank expired? Because that's one of the uh, arguments for continuing the, the, well, the process. Well, first, over 98% of all U.S. exports are financed without export-import. So if anybody comes to you and say, oh my God, this is going to be a huge blow to the American economy, uh, either they don't know what they're talking about or they're clearly misleading you. Uh, there are some small businesses that access uh, XM, and they may have challenges, but most of this, again, uh, benefits Fortune 500 companies in Boeing alone. Uh, historically, uh, you know, somewhere between a little less to actually half of XM Bank's exposure has been to Boeing. That's why it's been nicknamed the Bank of Boeing. Uh, and there have been a number of reports saying every company, with the possible exception of Boeing, every major company, uh, would be able to finance their exports just fine. Now you hear about, well, we have to level the playing field because other nations will subsidize their exports. But, you know, that's not a very good argument just because everybody else is doing it. It's, it's an argument that occasionally I hear from my children, and I've never found it to be a very convincing argument to do something because everybody else is doing it. Listen, if we're going to level the playing field, the way to level the playing field is to bring down our tax rate. We have yes. the single highest corporate tax rate of any industrialized nation in the world. We need a fairer, flatter, simpler, more competitive tax code, number one. Number two, according to the Chamber of Commerce, we have two and a half times as much liability exposure as our competitors. I mean, let's, let's enact tort reform, level the playing field that way. 
Even versus green Europe, according to the National Association of Manufacturers, our environmental remediation costs are even higher. So ultimately, business has to make a decision. Uh, and that is, do you want to try to succeed uh, through guarantee and subsidy, or do you want to try to succeed uh, through opportunity and freedom? If you want to succeed through opportunity and freedom, I want to help you. If you want to succeed through guarantee and subsidy, i got better things to do. Well, on that same subject, the uh, topic of inversions has come up uh, a lot recently. Burger King, of course, uh, buying Tim Hortons to uh, repatriate in, into Canada. And there's a lot of people saying, you know, if you've got companies that are repatriating in Canada for tax purposes, there's obviously a problem with the tax code here in the United States. Uh, you have the White House that is looking for ways to punish uh, businesses for attempting to do these inversions and repatriations. Is that the right approach? Well, the right approach is for voters to punish President Obama and his party at the next election. Uh, it's just fascinating to me, fascinating to me, that for over 200 years, business enterprises have been trying to get to America, site in America, do business in America, incorporate in America. And after a few years of Barack Obama, they're now trying to get out. I mean, that's the real tragedy here. Why are they trying to get out? One, again, we have the highest single corporate tax rate uh, in America. Barack Obama is chasing uh, business enterprises and jobs away. I mean, nobody else has excelled as he has excelled in creating uh, the non-recovery recovery. I mean, part of it is the tax policies, and it's the complexity of the tax code, not just uh, its, its high marginal rates. Uh, again, going back to the National Association of Manufacturers, they've said half, half of our competitive disadvantage results from the tax code. So let's be competitive. Let's increase the size of the pie. Let's get rid of this Obama-nomics where all we're doing is slicing uh, a diminishing pie. Let's increase its size. And so that says fundamental tax reform, something the president does not favor. Fundamental tax reform and, and the XM Bank. You got it. So nothing more ambitious than that, though, Congressman Henserling. No, nah, we'll get it done by next Tuesday. There you go. <laughs> Congressman Jeb Henserling, thank you for spending some time with us today. Happy to do it. Happy to do it.